Good morning, everyone. Good morning to those of you that are online. We're very happy that you could tune in. Today is our worship. Um, we have a, um, our hymn sing. Uh, but before that, uh, the theme for the day, the risen Savior gives a message of repentance. May the Lord bless your worship. So if you have a hymn you would like to pick, uh, feel free to do so. Anise? 627. Uh, this is for her father who's in rehab. We'll be having a prayer for him today. 625, correct? 627. 627, sorry. <clears throat> Seven, two, one.
Five, four, five. Five, two, five. Eight o three.
584, that will be the last one. Okay, EJ, I want to hear you. Let's go to the board and we'll open it with our first hymn that's listed there. Hymn 449. 449. This joyful Easter tide away with sin and sorrow, my love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. Had Christ, who once was slain, that burst his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now is Christ arisen, arisen, arisen. But now is Christ arisen. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from ill, my passing soul deliver. Had Christ who once was slain the first is three day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 
arisen of love, but now as Christ arisen. Please arise. We will follow the order of service on page 154, the service setting one, page 154. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature. I have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins. With his innocent suffering and death, Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, 
Oh, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy on us. You only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O oh Christ, with the Holy Spirit, heart most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up the fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is recorded in Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 20. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate though he had decided to let him go. You disown the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he, may be, uh, that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. The word of the Lord. Be Please open up your blue hymnals to Psalm 150. We will sing that in unison.
sing praise to the Lord, you people of grace, till heaven does song away from this place. Since you are God's servant, send meet in his name, his wonders declare. And his glory be proclaim. Alle, hallelujah. 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 Alle, hallelujah. exceeds what words can explain and his is the power no force can restrain with fanfares of horns and crescendos of strings comes to a, a king of all kings Alle, alleluia, alle, alle, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Music is made. Let rhythms abound, let cymbal and drum and wait to the sound. With that sense, grace, full and words that are clear, bring joy to the God you adore and revere. as the psalm each moment accord let harmonies flourish melody soar let all that has breath praise the Lord evermore Our second reading is recorded in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, going on through chapter 2, verse 2. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just 
and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all righteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Please arise in respect for the Holy Gospel. If you will turn to the Gospel Acclamation on page 161, we will sing the third line there where it says, Easter, praise God for a living hope. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God for a living hope. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's join in singing our second hymn, 573, 573. Jesus, your blood and righteousness, my beauty, high, my glorious dress, mid flaming worlds in these array, with joy shall I lift up my head. Bold shall I stand in that great day, for who what against me say, fully absolved through these I am, from sin and fear, from guilt. 
doubt and shame. Lord, I believe your precious blood, which at the very throne of God pleads for the captive's liberty, was also shed in love for me. Lord, I believe we're sinners more than sands upon the ocean shore. You have for all a ransom paid for all a full atonement made. When from the dust of death I rise to claim my mansions in the skies. In the end I'll be my only plea. Jesus has lived and died for me. Please arise. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen once again to the, God, to the uh, lesson that we heard just a moment ago in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through chapter 2, verse 2. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Christ Jesus, my dear fellow redeemed, what would you do if someone wanted to sue you? Let's just say that someone was, uh, it was an icy day and, and they fell down on your sidewalk or right? they were coming up the driveway to your house and broke a leg. Well, they might sue. What happens if you're in a car accident and someone else gets hurt or even dies and they lose uh, the money, the income, there's a good chance you're going to get sued. Have you ever noticed that um, when there's, you look at certain billboards, there are all kinds of advertisements out there. Um, if you're getting a divorce, hey, here's a lawyer. would be very happy to help you. Or, or yes, I've seen it once 
if you get hit by a semi-truck, there's specialists that will help you get money from the semi-truck company. They're all over the place. They want your money and they want your business. And so they advertise, don't they? So if you are sued and something happens, you may say, well, I don't like to get to lawyers, but you know, there are times when you need a lawyer. And uh, they come in handy and they can help you. They can save you money. But um, how do you pick which one? Maybe you find a friend. Well, I had good success with this lawyer. But I don't care what kind of reputation they have or what kind of advice you get. Very few lawyers have 100% win victories. They just don't. And so there's kind of a little bit of a risk. Which one are you going to go to? And when we look at our text today, we find that if you need to go to court with God, and we all do, let's face it, the day is going to come when you're going to die, unless judgment day comes forth. But in either case, if you're dying, or if you don't, if Jesus comes back before you die, you're still going to rise up into the heavens and, and there will be a judgment. Are you going to go to heaven? Are you going to go to hell? All right? So, there's going to have to be an accounting. You do need representation. You do need a, an attorney. When we look at our text today, we find that there is such a perfect attorney who wins 100% of his cases. So, when you go to court with God... Go to court with Jesus. He is that attorney. And what are you going to do when you get to that court? Are you going to try and make excuses? Well, this is what happened and that's what happened. Your attorney Jesus is going to say, don't do that. No. What you need to do when you go is to plead guilty. All right? You need to plead the reality of who you are as a sinner. Otherwise, you're going to lose. And secondly, after you've pleaded guilty, you need to trust Jesus because he is your perfect advocate, or could you say your spiritual attorney, your perfect advocate with the Father. In fact, the Father and the Son love each other. They're united with each other. Trust your attorney, Jesus. Well, what happens if you are guilty, but you lie in court? You go to court in an earthly sense here, and uh, you, you tell the judge that uh, you didn't do it, or there were special circumstances. If you are found out caught in a lie, you know, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, although they leave this so help you God part out in today's courts, but... Uh, uh, but whether they don't say the words or not, you are before God if you're in a regular secular court. But what happens if you lie? It's not going to go well with you. <laughs> uh, you're going to go to jail. There's a good chance that you will pay a huge fine. You don't want to lie. Um, if you are guilty... Your judge, your lawyer may say, well, I don't want you to plead guilty. That doesn't look that good. But when you're in the court with God, you can plead this or you can plead that. You can plead special circumstances, but God is a just God. He's not going to accept one single part of that. There's only one thing that we can do, and we do it every single Sunday. In fact, the words of our confession are taken right here from this, from this text. Let me reread for you, verse 6, 8, 9, and 10. It just, we're all over the place here. Um, verse 6, if we claim that we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. Do you think when, when a person lies, they're trying to convince someone else that you're better than what you really are, that you're trying to ignore something that's truth. But the problem is, is that you might get away with it here on this world, but you can't get away with a God. God knows all things. If you're lying, you're going to get called in the carpet. He knows the truth. 
Uh, then, then look at uh, verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Isn't that interesting? Uh, we sometimes think we are innocent or we're not as bad as, as what God says. And yet, if we don't, then we're deceiving ourselves. It's easy to lie to yourself. I'm not that bad. Well, God says you are. And he says I am and we are. Verse 9 and 10. Uh, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So what is the first thing you want to do when you go to court? Admit it. Confess your sins. I can't do anything by myself and now trust and plead for the mercy of the judge. Verse 10, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out him. Remember, before you're lying to yourself. But God is accusing you of sin. He knows you. He knows me. And so if we say we're not that bad or we're not sinners or we're not, uh, uh, and that we somehow we have kept the law of God, we're making God out to be a liar. You call the judge a liar? It's not going to end well, is it? And you're also saying his word is a lie. Well, God's word, is, the Bible says God's word is truth. And therefore, um, if you're saying it's a lie, then God's word, you're throwing it out. It has no place in our lives, if that's what you are saying. So, um, what does God want us to do? What are the excuses we tend to make? The Bible tells us, uh, yes, we are sinners. So, let's just real quickly run through the commandments. You shall have no other gods. Have you had other gods? How much have we sinned? Yeah, we have. Anything you fear, love, and trust in more than the true God, it is your, becomes your God. We don't always trust in God above all things, not when it comes to money, not when it comes to our health. We uh, fix things ourselves. Second, you should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain or use it uselessly. And we could think about cursing and swearing, but you could also think about, hey, when's the last time you said the Lord's Prayer? Here, right here in church. Did you always use, think about what you were saying? If not, you're using God's name uselessly. That's a sin. Third commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Okay. Have you come here willingly and joyfully every single Sunday or every single time that there's the, the Lord offers his word? Or, or do we do it grudgingly or because it's a habit? You know, if our heart isn't there, it's, it's also a sin, isn't it? Four. Honor your father and your mother, but it also honor, respect those who are in authority. Have we always done that? And we made jokes out of politicians that we don't like? That's not giving them honor. You see, whether they are bad politicians, bad governors or not, nevertheless, they are God's representatives. Go look at Romans 13. And therefore, the office that they carry is to be respected even if you disagree with the person in the office. Fifth, you shall not murder. Well, how many of you have murdered someone? It's easy to say, make it seem, no, I haven't done that. I'm not that bad. But the reality is, you look at the Sermon on the Mount, you get angry with someone, and it's not righteous wrath. You murdered him in God's eyes. See, he looks at the thoughts that comes from the heart. He has a different standard that you might have or that society has. Sixth commandment, you should not commit adultery. Yet who hasn't had sinful thoughts? Lust. We all have committed sins against this commandment. Or you shall not steal. You might say, well, I haven't robbed the First National Bank. I'm I'd never think of doing something like that. See, that's self-righteousness, isn't it? But if you look at the definition of that in the catechism and what the Bible claims is stealing, if you are not willing to help to improve and protect your neighbor's property and business, and you see that there is some need for the protecting your neighbor's, you've stolen from him. You've committed a sin against the seventh commandment. Or... Eighth commandment, summarizing it. Have you ever gossiped about someone? Heard someone, 
Oh, that's juicy. And then blabbed it to someone else. The Bible says that if you've sinned against one commandment, you've sinned against them all. So you've sinned against one commandment, you've just automatically done ten. Because you cannot sin against one and not violate every single other one. So what do we have to do? We, we have to plead we are guilty. Because if you don't, then you're saying, there's some good in me and I don't need the forgiveness of sins for that. But if you do, then what you're doing is throwing Christ under the bus. He paid for all of those sins. And if I don't want to confess them, then I'm belittling Jesus Christ himself. Why do we have a confession in church? Because we don't want to belittle Jesus Christ and what he did for us. We, we, it's, it's the most gracious gift he's given us. But that means to understand it and believe it, we need to admit, I can't do it. If you listen to people and you ask the question, if you're there before the throne of God, why should God let you into heaven? Most people will say, well, because I wasn't as bad as someone else. Or they might say, I did my best. Or I was a good person here. I, I... But is doing your best good enough? No. He says, be holy as I, the Lord your God, am holy. That's what's good enough. And none of us have ever done that. That's kind of bleak. Where are we going to turn? What are we going to do? The answer to that is nothing. Don't try to justify yourself. Don't try to earn, say, God, uh, look at what I did. It won't work. We come to the second part of our text, though, and it does give us the solution, and it's beautiful. Look at verse 2b uh, in our text. Um, or chapter uh, 2, verse 1 and 2. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, what I've just showed us, we have. Now, if I do, I do it all the time. You do too, every single day. Well, so what are we going to do? Hey, you have an advocate who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. You're not righteous, but he is. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. When he died on the cross, he paid for all the sins, even the people that were in hell already, the people that will go to hell, their sins were paid for. They were forgiven. Remember, they don't get the benefits unless you believe it. So if you want to understand this, think about a court. We want to go to court with God, with Jesus as our attorney. Why? So if you have a courtroom situation, what are you going to do? Who's the defendant? God is accusing you and me of sin. So he takes us to court. And what happens? All right? You're the defendant. But who's the judge? On Judgment Day, who's going to come back and judge the quick and the dead, we used to say, the living and the dead? It's Jesus, right? Jesus is the judge. All right? And what is he going to judge you based on? The Ten Commandments. The law. If you go to a court here and you're charged with something, it has to be against the law. No one's going to charge you with a crime if you smiled at someone or uh, used your constitutional right to free speech. But if it's against the law, someone will judge you. And it's based on the law. So we have the law of God, the Ten Commandments. Uh, and what do they do? They protect your, your, your body, your life. Um, the law says you must be holy. And we are not. But you need to have evidence. Judge, here's evidence number one. Here, here's the case number two and three and so on. So what evidence does, is presented against you and me? Every single time you sin. The Bible talks about the books being opened. And holy to moly, every single day, everything that you ever did is written down, and there it is. And if you do not have an advocate, if you do not have someone who has washed that away and paid for it, it's going to be read as evidence. You go to hell, 
You deserve it. And here's what we have against you. Can you defend against it? No, because nothing you can do is perfect. So what's the judge going to do? Eventually the trial is over. A verdict has to be read. And the ver verdict has to be guilty. God is just. If you have a judge and he really likes someone and, and the, the guy is a murderer and he just lets him off. No jail time. Not even a reprimand. You'd say that judge needs to be removed. He is an unjust judge. But God is not unjust. God is perfectly just. And therefore, he has to pronounce sentence. You and I are guilty. This is the sentence that we deserve. Eternal damnation in hell. But now we come in, you got to go to court with Jesus. He has to be your attorney. He is your attorney. And what does he do? See, this is interesting too because when you look at the attorney is the judge, but he's also your attorney. If you're willing to trust that attorney, he, the, as judge, he's going to rule in your favor. So how does he match up justice? The wages of sin is death. This must be paid or he's not a just God. How do you compare that? How do you resolve that with his letting you go? Saying not guilty. Which is what he does as a judge. How do you resolve justice with love? Punishment with freedom. There's only one way. Your lawyer, your attorney says, okay, your judge, I will pay the penalty myself. That's exactly what he did when he died on the cross. That's exactly what he did when he is punished with eternal damnation, except for him. He's God. He takes care of all the sin, the eternity of every sin, and he takes care of it in the few hours that he's on the cross. He suffers as your substitute. And so, on Easter Sunday morning, and this is Easter, um, an Easter message, it is on Easter that God declares you not guilty. Justified. That means just as if you never sinned. In God's eyes, you see it, so you confess your sins. I see it. I confess my sins every day, every Sunday. So I can appreciate this forgiveness more. But from God's point of view, he looks at you and he sees Jesus. He sees your attorney who pleads your case. I took the punishment. So don't give him, don't give you the punishment. I took it. Do you believe that? Then it's yours. You will not be punished on judgment day. The books will be opened. But all they will, God will see is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Not one sin, not one dirty thought, not one bad word will be there. But if you throw Jesus out, there are all the dirty, all the words are. There are all the accusations are right there. Without Jesus, we're damned. With Jesus is your perfect, holy attorney who lived the holy life in your stead and now on Easter morning it's credited to your account. When God sees you, he sees Jesus' holiness. And when he says not guilty, what does that mean? You don't go to jail. You don't go to hell. Where do you go? Heaven. Why are we so happy at Easter? Because we're declared not guilty. Because that means heaven is our home. It means we will rise again to glory. To glory means what? Without sin at all. The state of perfection forever. Now, isn't that exciting? So trust Jesus as your attorney right now. It's the only way you can have hope. Don't, don't make excuses. Confess your sins. And trust and believe. This, when we say, I believe in Jesus, what are we saying? We're saying, I believe that Jesus has lived the holy life for me. 
And as my attorney, he has paid for those sins. And therefore, when he says not guilty, when God, God doesn't lie, I am saved. You are saved. Take that home and rejoice. Rejoice that it, Jesus rose from the dead. And this is the result. Amen. Please arise. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please open up your hymnals to page 162. And let's join together in confessing our Christian, no, 163. Uh, and confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and we'll pray the prayer that's found on page 164. Um, in addition to that, we'll be praying for various people who are sick, um, who have cancer, and, but, uh, and also thanking God for some of the blessings that have been given to certain of our members, and they're asking us to rejoice with them. But we're also having a special prayer for our soldiers that are in harm's way at this point in time, and uh, uh, that have, uh, with the activities of last night, and the uh, a missile attack on Israel, and the United States forces are involved in defending that. So we want to pray for our troops at a special time like this. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Especially we ask for your prayers upon Cheryl Talbert, uh, who has her thyroid removed Monday, for Kim Reese, his sister, um, who is Cheryl uh, Talbert. Please uh, watch over Janice Lawson, who had back surgery last week. Help her to be able to overcome the pain, be able to get back home, and to be able to continue with a life uh, without the pain, if it is your will. We ask for, that you would bless the friend of Tom Finney, Howard Copin. Please allow Jean Hill to continue to be able to recover 
from the, re, from his, the fall and the hip surgery that he had. Allow him to be able to go home soon if it is your will. We also thank you for allowing Jean and Ada Hill uh, 64 years of wedded uh, bliss together. Preserve them and keep them uh, together and help them to be an example of, of, uh, of uh, Christian wedding and, and Christian love together. Please watch over Fran Shoemaker and Bill Shoemaker. Help them to recover their strength. Help them to have patience uh, with each other, with their lives, uh, as uh, you allow them to walk the, the, the path to eternal glory with you. Help them have confidence to look forward to you, the author of salvation, the author of their lives. Please continue to watch over Doug Hahn. Alleviate the pain that he has. Help him to be able to work and to provide still for his family. Watch over him and his family. If it is your will, allow the cancer to be defeated. Please watch over Jennifer Nickish. Um, we ask that you would allow her cancer to be defeated. Allow her, strengthen her, send your Holy Spirit so that she will come closer to you and uh, grow uh, in your love. Please be with Bonnie Barnett as she struggles with her health issues. We ask that you watch over John Teha uh, and allow the cancer to be defeated. Please watch over him and strengthen him. Help him to uh, trust you, to love you, and grow closer to you through this. Watch over his wife, Linda. Help her not to be afraid of the future. Help her to simply trust you more because you are worthy of our trust. These and all things you would have us pray. We ask them, grant them your love. Um, we ask them in Jesus' name. Remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again. We pray for our military. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world and King of peace, watch over our sons and daughters in the service of their country. Protect them from the physical and moral dangers of military life. Keep them close to you and help them live in such a manner that is pleasing to you. Lord Jesus, give them courage to serve their country with honor and dignity. Be with them when they are in danger. Strengthen them when they face hardships. Above all, Lord, grant that when their service is finished, they may return to us, sound in mind, body, and soul. And Lord, for those who give the ultimate sacrifice with their lives for serving our country, please touch and minister grace and healing to their families. Again, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's return a portion of what God has given us as a offering of thankfulness and for what he has offered to us.
Please open up your hymnals to 833 and let's sing him I run to Christ. When chased by fear and find a refuge sure, believe in me, his voice I hear, his words and wounds secure. I run to Christ when vexed by help and find a redundant peace. I too had tears, he gently speaks, thus joy and sorrow me. I run to Christ when warm by life, and find my soul refreshed. Come unto me, he calls through strife, but he gives way to rest. I run to Christ when vexed by hell, and find a mighty arm. The devil flees, the scriptures tell, he roars but cannot harm. I run to Christ when stalked by sin, and find a sure escape. Deliver me, I cry to him, temptation yields to grace. I run to Christ when plagued by shame, and find my one defense. <coughs> God's wrath, he pleads my case, my advocate and friend. Please arise. Let us pray. We continue on page 171. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Please remain standing and let's sing our final hymn. Hymn number 465, Christ the Lord is risen today. is risen today saints on earth and angels say raise your joys and triumphs high sing O heavens and earth reply love's redeeming work is done fought the fight the battle won Lo, our sun's eclipse is on. Lo, he sets in blood no more. Vain the stone, the watch, the seal. Christ has burst the gates of hell. Death in vain forbids his rise. Christ has opened paradise. Lives again our glorious King. Where all oh, death is now your sting. Once he died our souls to save. Where your victory, O oh, grave. So we know where Christ has led, following our exalted head, made like him, like him we rise, ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Hail the Lord of heaven and earth, praise to you by both begin God has now fulfilled his work praise the resurrected Lord Amen Please be seated. Welcome, everyone. Those of you that are online, welcome also. Uh, the announcements are in your bulletin. Please read them carefully. And unless we have any other announcements, uh, until we meet again, once again, God's grace overwhelm you.